Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest linebacker in the NFL, the leader of the San Francisco 49ers defense, long hair, don't care, talk your shit, get hit. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Warner. Yeah. Hey, doing? man, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Pat. Thanks for having me on, baby. Thank you for joining us. I understand your life is very busy, especially this time of year, and you guys are over in a different time zone. So we appreciate you, Fred. We're big yeah. fans. Um, hey, dog, I appreciate you. Hey, let's jump in here. Feels like your team is at the exact same point you guys were last year going into the playoffs. Do you feel that way? Is that how you guys view yourself? And what can get better from your guys? You seem to be kicking ass everywhere right now. Yeah, no, I feel like we're in a really uh, similar position. I think the thing that feels different, though, is like our offense is playing at just an insane level right now. And I mean, last year they were playing at a really high level. I can't speak to how how great they're playing right now. I mean, they got weapons everywhere. And when my man MVP Perd is playing like the way he's playing, it's it's so fun to watch from the sideline. And as a defense, you know, how, I mean. As long as as we do our job, we know the offense can put up 30, 40, 50 points if they want. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I think right now what we can get better at is looking looking inward to myself as the defense, holding teams to as little points as possible because I know the offense is going to do their job. Go ahead, AJ. What's Brock Purdy like? We see him like when we watch him like as a fan. He seems like he is never flustered. He's The moment is never too big for him. He's always in control. Have you ever – like is that how he was from day one in there? From day one, that's exactly how he's been all the way through. And the guy's made of the right stuff. Uh, through and through, since the day he came in here, he's just been about ball. He hasn't been about any of the, the outside noise or any of that nonsense. You know, uh, all he wants to do is be his best self for this team. And that's exactly what you want out of your franchise quarterback, right? And uh, it doesn't matter how great he's playing or, you know, any type of lull that there's been. He's been the exact same head down, humble, humble as can be and the exact type of, type of guy that we need to, to lead our team. Let's talk about your team. Because on the offensive side, we see Ayuk and Debo and everybody blocking like 30, 40 yards downfield. And obviously Kittle is trying to take people's heads off 50 yards down the field for everybody else. And then on the defensive side, it's like you have seven maybe all-pro type guys. So you have these big personalities, big names everywhere. But it feels like you guys love each, like genuinely really love each other. Now, obviously you've been around each other for a long time, but sometimes that creates even more conflict for people with big. Why do you think your locker room has remained as tight as it is? And what did that Eagles loss in the NFC Championship do for all of you going into this season? There's a lot of different parts to that question, Pat. Fred, um, fucking answer I, all of them. <laughs> yeah, right. Listen, I think uh, obviously. John and Kyle, our, our head coach and GM, have done a great job of, of bringing guys onto this team that are just football players, guys with high character that love the game and are just good dudes. You know, good dudes who are also maniacs on the field. You know, don't get me wrong. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll smile, we'll shake your hand, but in between the white lines, like, we know how to turn it on. And I think any team can bring a bunch of really good players, like a lot of talent onto that team. That doesn't guarantee you anything. I think the thing that makes us special as a group is the mentality. Uh, the thing that we talk about, like you just mentioned, Debo and I, you, two of your star players, your, your leading receivers going down the field blocking as if it's their last their last play, you know, on that field. And so little things like that, I think, is what makes us different. And when you combine a whole group of a whole group of guys and a whole team with that same mentality, that's how you get the product that we put on that on the field every Sunday. Did the Eagles NFC loss? Do anything like off-season wise? Do you think? I don't, obviously, we hate bringing it up. We don't like it. Mm. We don't like it at all. And to be honest, as a guy that bet a lot of money on you guys, mm -hmm. I fucking hate thinking about it too. <laughs> okay, but Murphy's Law happened in that first quarter, and it was like, Boy, did it? Yeah, <laughs> it, it certainly did. did. Is that something that you guys have thought about, or did it change the way you guys act or treat this season after how it, how it went down? I mean, you talk about going to NFC Championship games and back-to-back -back years and losing both of them in completely different ways, right? But just going through hard things like that, those type of adversities make you stronger as a group. And then people who join the team, you know, they realize the moment as well. They see how important it is to everyone that's been here, and they just kind of follow suit of what, what's been going on here. But, uh, yeah, you mentioned it. Like, that that game last year, Murphy's Law, everything happened – bad that could happen happened in that game and we had no control over a lot of things that happened in that game so at the end of the day it was just 
it left a sour taste in our mouth because we didn't have an opportunity to really to really put put together on that field what we thought we had uh, for that moment. And so coming into the season, having Brock back healthy has meant obviously everything for us. You can see with uh, how we're playing. So um, we just got to keep it going, man, and keep guys healthy. Yeah, that could splinter a team, though. You know, we've seen other teams lose in devastating fashion, and then obviously egos get loud and finger pointing starts happening, and it's like you guys all had the same reaction. We had Debo at Radio Row like a week later. Might as well have not been there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was pit, everybody, same exact reaction. It's like that can really – Hey, it's fun to watch your team, dude. You guys got a good squad. Connor has a question for you. Yeah, Fred, yesterday on the TV cup, I'm not sure if you saw it, but there was about three minutes left and a majority of the starters, including yourself, were off the field. The camera cut to you, and it looked like you guys were losing by 40 points just based on how <laughs> pissed off you looked. Uh, if you guys don't get a shutout every week, is that something that you're just angry about no matter what? Or what was going on there as you were watching the game? Yeah, it's not so much the shutout. I mean, anytime a team runs for over 200 yards on you, you're pretty uh, pissed off about it. Uh, we knew going into that game that they had a really great scheme, great players. Uh, it could potentially hurt us in the run game, and they they obviously did that. And we 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 were lucky enough to keep the points down low enough, and our offense is amazing enough to dr drop over 40 on them. But yes, I was I was pretty upset with how the outing that we had in the run game. But hey, that's just there's a standard here of excellence that has been put in place and we got to uphold that standard. That's yeah, all it is. You guys put the standard in, which is also another, you know, the founders of the standard also still being there. Great for culture. Tone has a question for yeah, you. Yeah. Speaking of that, Fred, you guys are so violent. It feels like on every single play. And it feels like you're kind of the leader of that on the, on defense. Like you come in with bad intentions on every single tackle. Is that something that you guys stress and talk about? And, and are you that guy on off or on defense? And is, is Trent that guy on offense or is it just a whole team thing? How's that work for you guys? I feel like it's a whole team thing. Honestly, uh, our goal, every single time we're out there Sunday, Monday, Saturday, it doesn't matter any day we got to play the game. We're trying to impose our will on our opponent. Yeah, the goal is to win the game, but we know if we do the things necessary to win that game, that it, that'll the win will take care of itself. We do we do the little things right, like like trying to hit you as hard as we can, like running to the football effort. The li those little things that not everybody wants to do in December, January football. We're trying to do it at the highest level right now, and we know that those little things will pay off in the long run. Do you know what the record is of teams after they play you guys? This season? Just in general. Yeah, you're this team. Your team. No, I'm not sure. Last year, I know it was like Ofer, but yeah. I'm not, I don't know about that. Yeah, it's <laughs> continuing. Yeah, you guys just beat the shit out of it. You, you completely demoralize them. They get a week-long hangover yeah. in the entire thing. Yeah. I love that that's Perfect. a mindset. Go ahead, AJ. You mentioned that standard. I saw some, some quotes from you after the game when you were speaking with the media, obviously upset about how many rush yards you give up. You know, that standard, though, how do you uphold that? We, it's easy to talk about and say, yeah, of course, this is our standard. This is what we, what we expect. But it's like those little things, I would imagine, day in and day out that you have to do. Like, don't make the little things the big things, all of that cliche coach garbage speak, but it actually is true. How do you kind of continue to cultivate and keep that standard? Yeah, you got to be honest with yourself, regardless of if it's a win or a loss. You got to look at the tape. The tape never lies, right? You, you look at that tape. And you got to be honest with yourself, even through a win. I think that's what the great part about a win is. You'd much rather learn from a win than learn from a loss. So we win this game. We win the division. Yeah, that those are that's number one, first and foremost. I'll never take that away from us. But then we go in. We're gonna go in, and we got to look at this tape hard and be like, okay, where did we, you know, where did we mess up? Where did where were we wrong in our fits, uh, missed tackles? Where do we get better? And I think as long as you continue to be honest with yourself, regardless of the situation, because some guys, they get false confidence in a win where it's like, oh, man, we blew those guys out. We tore them up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, let's watch, watch that tape, buddy. It, it might be a different story there. And those little things continue to snowball effect if you if you don't take care of them and you're, you're not straight up with yourself. So, you know, I think that's what makes us great is we're able to really look at ourselves hard and, for, and you know, forget the outcome. We're trying to get better. That's an experienced team. That's a mature team. Mm -hmm. I, I do hope you guys watch the play where Ward took it back. He looked like he was running maybe a 4 0, 40, maybe a 4 <laughs> shot out of an actual cannon. I mean, this, he, he fucking pulled away yeah. out of this thing. What a stud. You guys are loaded on that defensive side, Fred. 
Yeah, that's all pro Mooney right there. Uh, you know, I think that that probably one of the biggest plays in the game. You see the score at seven to seven tie ball game in the first quarter, and that kind of flipped the momentum uh, for us. And we've been talking about it all year. Coach Wilkes talking about wanting to score on defense. That's our first score on defense this year. And Mooney sure. uh, has been unbelievable all season, but he's been talking about wanting to get those interceptions up, right? He's getting the pass breakups, but he wanted to take some home. Yesterday, he took it home in a big way. Um, let's talk about defensive coordinator Wilkes because he was maybe going to be the head coach of Carolina. Mm -hmm. They say, no, you lose D'Amico to Houston. What is his different? What has the been the difference between D'Amico and Wilkes or this defense versus another defense? Does he come in and say, we're playing your guys' style? How has that development been on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, I think the biggest difference was in my in my first two seasons, you know, I think with Sala, he came in with that cover three scheme. And then we hot we hired in-house with D'Amico, who obviously knew the cover three scheme, and we did it at a high level. With Coach Wilkes, he came in here and was such a humble cat. He came in here and was like, no, I'm going to learn what you guys do. You know, I'm not bringing anybody with me. Everybody that's been here is going to be here. I'm going to learn everybody. I'm going to learn this scheme, and we're going to do it at the highest level. And, you know, I, I can't I can't speak enough to how great of a leader he's been to us in the room uh, just in, in one year's work. Right. And, and we're continuing to get better, continuing to be honest. And I love that me and him have this constant flow of communication with one another, where if I say something to him, it, it actually means something, you know, and not to say that it, it hasn't in the past. But like it, you could just tell when somebody's a really genuine human human being. And so we're going to continue to get better. I'm not worried about, you know, uh, dips and lows. That's just what happens when you're when you're having new new pieces, you know, to the to the puzzle. But I think we've been doing a really good job. Yeah, we're seeing what's going on in different teams whenever they change their defense coordinator. Haven't really talked about this just because you guys are seemingly always dominant. He goes from booth to sideline, right? Or did he go sideline to booth? I forget the change. Booth to sideline. Because you wanted to yell at him in his face or what? <laughs> <laughs> That's something he wanted to do, man. You know, he hey, he decided he wanted to come down and, and look us in the eye and be down there for little in-game adjustments, and it, I think it's helped in a big way. I, I always thought maybe those people didn't have good daps. Uh, uh, I mean, oh, keep yep. him in a booth. Right. Don't, don't want to have to do that. He, he's got good, clean. <laughs> yeah, all right. Clean, I'm happy to hear, boy. Clean. clean as it can get. I'm happy to hear that. D-Butt has a question Young for you, Fred. Denzel. Yeah, Fred, you've been doing it at a high level for a long time now. AJ pointed out our own – all pro Mooney second pick that drop you have. So I think you'll be one of the examples for the younger generation of, hey, this is what I want to be as a linebacker, running to the ball, being in a position. Who were those guys you looked up to that you kind of modeled your game after coming up? Man, I appreciate that, first of all. Um, you know, early on in my career, I was just trying to find my way, trying to find my way on that field and guys that I was looking up to to try to pull pieces of their game to my game was, you know, Bobby Wagner, Luke Keekley, two of the best in the league, who happened to be in the same conference that I was in. So uh, early on, all talks about Pro Bowl and all that stuff was off, off the table because they had that on lock. <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, I mean, those are two of the two of the best in the game to ever do it. And I was right there front and center being able to watch these guys, uh, watch their tape, and obviously Bobby playing him twice a year. I'll, I'll never forget my rookie year. We're in Seattle, and he they're down on the goal line. Our offense is – is charging down the field and they're in the red zone. Bobby takes a pick and, and houses it for like a hundred yards down down our sideline, and I'm standing there watching it like, God, this guy's it's amazing. This guy's it's, everywhere. It's the best thing I've ever seen in my life. And uh, yeah, man. So that's been like a big brother to me now. Like having his number, being able to communicate with him and stuff like that has been uh, super humbling, and I'm so grateful to him. But you know, those are two of the best that I've always kind of looked at. Hey, Fred. They said the game has gotten soft. So I would like you to take this time, mm -hmm. let people know that that's bullshit if you'd like. Yeah, all right. You said it right there. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, is it no, hard, is it hard though? Is it hard with all the rule changes and course, the inconsistencies yeah. and everything? How do you manage all of that without like overthinking or overanalyzing anything? Stop hip drop tackling. Yeah, right. stop hip yeah. drop tackle. Yeah. Can't, that's do, can't that's crazy. It. That one right there, I, don't, I, I mean, I can understand like the helmet to helmet stuff, like obviously keeping your head up. And those sort of things. The hip drop thing is like you never go into a tackle saying I'm going to purposely <laughs> drop my weight on the back of a defender. It's like you, in that situation, you're so like you just want to get the guy down by yeah. any means. You know, it's not like <laughs> yeah. you're purposely trying to hurt the guy. Right. Yeah. And so it is hard as a defender. Um, but, you know, you got to you got to play the game the right way. I think uh, the thing that gets lost in this game is, you know, playing with with a high amount of effort. I think that's what separates guys. I think that's what helps separate me. 
uh, in my game is just running to the football, man, and, and and trying to arrive with bad intentions, like you mentioned. Uh, the the art of finishing is is being lost a little bit. So I think if you know we keep that up, then then we have no problem. I love that. I love to hear that. When I watched you guys play against the Seattle Seahawks last year, Thursday night football, mm -hmm. Brock Purdy hit George for two touchdowns. I think that was whenever the whole train was getting started. Mm -hmm. I think the thing I love most about your team, your defense. Was everybody's to the ball in the frame? There's ten guys, nine guys in the frame, which is always good. But then you guys were shit talking too. Like it was, uh, it was a reminder afterwards. You guys have a blast. It feels like your team has a great time playing football together out there. The defense, more specifically, a great time. And I'd say offense and defense. You know, you see guys like you, you keep mentioning Kittle. He just a, a ball of energy, ball of fun. Uh, and then defensively, yeah, man, when you when you love what you're doing and you love who you're doing it with, it's so easy to be out there making plays, having fun, doing the celebrations. And it's not about just having fun when you make a play. It's like having even more fun when you, when your teammate makes a play, you know, and I think that's what really makes a special group. And I heard Tom Brady say one time, he's like, man, you, you're scared of the team that you look over and they're they're celebrating with every, every one of their teammates is celebrating with each other after a big play. Because you're like, oh man, that team kind of that team loves each other. Like you got to be careful with those teams. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I, we take that real personal. Yeah, it's a message to the other team whenever you're yeah. celebrating. Bill Belichick actually in one of the documentaries, "Do Your Job," he was talking to the team, circling like, "What do you think this sends to the other team when nobody's exactly. celebrating? What do you think this message sends? You guys do it. You got a lot to celebrate over there. Yeah, you got a lot to <laughs> celebrate over there." Ty has a question for you. Yeah, Fred. Speaking of Seattle, there was a report that came out after the game that uh, <laughs> Coach Shanahan basically said like, "Hey." Whichever one of you guys gets under DK Metcalf's skin and kind of causes him to break, you're going to get a little extra something for Christmas from me. Obviously, we saw what happened. He gets tossed. Uh, just curious, is that true? Do you know, is Coach Shanahan getting you something sweet? And then to Pat's point, like, are you surprised that type of stuff doesn't happen more often because you guys are so frequently beating the shit out of teams <laughs> and also talking shit while you're doing it? Yeah, no, I mean, that... That whole thing is kind of fake news. Uh, that, oh, that come on. Damn, that was cool. That was fun. No, that's fake news through and through. Uh, that never happened. And if you even watch the game, like, none of us are antagonizing DK at any point in that game. Like, if you call antagonizing, like, you know, uh, Diamondo Lenore, like, breaking up a pass or something, like, if that's antagonizing, I don't know what that is. But, you know, me and him had our own separate thing at the end of the game, and that was what it was. Boom. And on to the next. But that whole, I don't know. Presence and all that stuff. That's fake news. Man. He gave you a good belly to back. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's a good belly to back suplex. Kurt he did. He absolutely did. It, it, it uh, wasn't very fun. <laughs> hey, Brock Lesnar gets a hold of you, you know. <laughs> suplex City. This is bad. Hey, you're up for Defense Player of the Year this year, man. I am um, so pumped. And I don't want, you know, I don't want to say like proud, but legitimately watching you play football is fun, dude. It is. We all enjoy it a lot. And you said play the right way. It seems like you do that. And you, uh, you got a squad around you that is about to go on a run. I'm not jinxing anything, but I will once again lose a shit ton of money if you guys <laughs> don't, don't hey, go. Don't jinx us, Pat. Ah! Don't jinx us, man. You're right. I'm not yeah, doing it. I'm not don't doing it. Don't say another word. All right. Well, good luck the rest of the way. You're the man. <laughs> Thank you for spending some time with us, Fred. I appreciate you, bro. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Fred Ward. Yeah, Fred.